Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dave Hybrex. I'm uh, the CEO of uh, TPA Global. Uh, we have uh, an honored guest with us today, Andreas uh, Weitner of the Eclair. Andreas and me have worked together on uh, various customs uh, projects and would like to share some, some interesting uh, talks and uh, examples with you today on how uh, the, the, uh, the customs technology works in a platform-based economy. As you, some of you may know, but uh, uh, Andreas will share some more details on that. Eclear is a, uh, a, what, what I call a next generation of tax agents. So they deal with uh, uh, the VAT and customs determination and they have engines, uh, so smart algorithms, uh, uh, AI VAT, uh, which uh, which help you to determine the, the appropriate rate, but also um, uh, make sure the data gets to the the right mailbox, digital mailbox of the tax authorities. Um, uh, Andreas, welcome. We we're going to start with a few uh, a, a few slides from my side to set the scene on on where where data comes in into a, a tax technology environment, and then I'll I'll hand over to Andreas. Uh, so we could move to the next slide. This is the slide uh, where the use of certified people and processes and technology uh, more and more defines the actors in the tax technology space and, and the governance around it. So more and more of, uh, of the work will be pushed by certified people into certified processes and, and technology. Uh, that means more and more the tax relevant data will become the, the, the strategic asset of the in-house tax department where in this picture you see how the technology facilitated real-time output uh, caters for the needs of both taxpayers and tax authorities. As you see from this picture, they have different needs and they expect different outputs, yet it, it, uh, it relates to the same data set. So this is setting the scene on uh, the, the fact that, yes, people process technology is, is important uh, in, in these projects, but uh, it's, it's really the, the data as a strategic asset, which uh, needs uh, to get more and more the focal point in digital transformation projects uh, we're, uh, as TPA and Eclair, involved in. <clears throat> if, we, if we move to the next page, then it still shows a fairly classical view on data. You have source tiers, uh, SAP for HANA, Microsoft, uh, you have uh, Oracle and other systems holding data, transactional data as well as other. Um, you have connected tiers which uh, to connect to storage tiers, then you have processing tiers ultimately to uh, land in reporting tiers and access tiers is the uh, user interaction and uh, user experience uh, you see at the top. This is pretty much uh, uh, a, a tool which is uh, created by one of our tech partners uh, where you need to know that in each of these tiers there's about 40, 40 software packages which do cater for each of the tiers. And then the big question is how do you connect them all together? Um, as I said, this is pretty much a push model. So you have the, the, the creation of data at the bottom and you push it up to the users and the reporting at the, at the top of, uh, of the table. Um, we do uh, expect uh, that in the future, um, some of the data will be pulled from the system uh, by a smart, uh, a version of uh, Google Tax, uh, but in most cases uh, it's still a push model where we uh, where we are looking uh, with corporates into this uh, this whole data uh, architecture and data management game. Uh, this this is sort of leading to the next page, where the next page already starts uh, with a, a picture that some of you in in house might recognize. You have unstructured data. Um, Emails is an example. You have structured data. All your transactions on uh, on sale of goods is a, is is a, an example. 
which land in a tax data lake, which is uh, still pretty much everything you need for tax purposes, uh, but relatively unstructured. Then you create a tax data refinery, which uh, makes the data ready for a tax data warehouse, where ultimately cumulative data and transactional data is your is your um, uh, key points of references in, in terms of data. And you see a few examples at the bottom. Again, a push model. Again, uh, the, the, the various stages become very clear. And this is not uh, different from how the, the usual databases are being, being orchestrated. So if you are involved in tax technology, uh, have a... Um, um, have a good grip on, on this picture because that will also define at which stage of the, the data refinery you are. Um, you start with um, what, what we call dirty data. You need to go to clean data. And you see there's a lot of stages there which uh, a lot of people have to go through. And, and what we, st we still see, a lot of manual work is being, uh, being orchestrated to get the data, to um, uh, re remediate and, and clean up the, the bad data and, and then get to the clean data at the end. Um, if we go to the next picture, it sort of tells you the the two flows we typically like to look at. So we, we call data sets which are, are being cleared for tax purposes. We call that, like to call that the single source of truth, but in reality, it's a combination of the single source of data, which is the, the dark boxes on the right side and the single source of information, which is the light blue and the green boxes on the left side. So the left side, everyone recognizes. You have a, a Google, an Altrix, a Tableau. You have a, a, a Google or an Office work spot. Uh, and you have uh, various tools around you which feed the data into, into your lab, uh, where uh, in this particular case, the compliance tracker gives you uh, a real-time insight actionable insight, what is the next document, what is uh, you need to fill with data. Uh, typically that is being used by local finance and lo local tax compliance teams, uh, whereas the, the Power BI tool at the bottom, the status insight is typically giving uh, feed to lead tax compliance or audit committee or even C-suites, uh, are we 100% uh, uh, tax compliant? Um, and, and that's sort of the arrows between the, <clears throat> the data flow uh, on the right side where ERP, HR data, databases, legal databases uh, run the whole uh, cycle from to clean data, to forms, to XML data, and to filing in the digital mailbox. You see that the arrows tap into this data flow. It's almost like you're running a, a chemical refinery with different stages of uh, refining the, the, in this case, not the chemicals, but the data uh, to be ready for, um, uh, for filing. Um, so it's, it's good to have a picture like that because uh, if, we, if we look at the next picture, it gives you sort of a different uh, view of, of where I believe the future will go and that's a sort of starts to become an introduction to what uh, Andreas is going to share with us. If you have a single source of data where data gets uh, in a hybrid or single engine model, tax engine model, gets um, get, gets measured against a normative framework. Uh, here we talk about uh, tax and, and uh, text and, and rules and legis legislation on tax being mapped against the, 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 the data points. Um, then the single source of data will will uh, will give a reporting to the human, uh, the humans who are behind the behind the single source of information. Right? Like they need a human interface to be able to read all that data and to to be to understand how far they are on actionable insight through the compliance tracker and through by Power BI on the status uh, of of the compliance. 
you see this picture only has an arrow from the right to the left as a reporting. So it basically means there's no, um, there's no uh, back and forth anymore between the single source of data and single source of information. What does that mean? It means there's a high degree of autonomy in the single source of data. And the only thing the single source of data does is inform uh, the people that everything is okay and only in specific cases that there could be a human override. So this is where more and more of our, our models uh, uh, run into and, and obviously Eclair is a, a, a great example on VAT but uh, certainly also on custom on, on their way to, to deliver um, uh, an engine uh, like this where uh, the degree of digital transformation can also be measured on whether the arrow is from the right to the left or whether there's still a lot of arrows a lot of human involvement in the single source of data that means that the arrow will also go from the left to the right so it's a very simple way to test your own maturity and in, in, in where you are on the on the on the planet of digital transformation if we if we take that uh, to the next slide, then you see the, the the extract, transform, and load staging tables, uh, which are used in a lot of databases. So you have uh, various data sources. Uh, it could be your ERP system, could be your HR, as we said, your intercompany legal legal agreements repository. That lands in a uh, in a warehouse, and uh, more and more the metadata management is becoming more and more important uh, to to uh, basically create a uh, digital twin of how you run your business model. So the raw data and the summary data together with met metadata will give you an 85, 95 percent correct view of how you run your business model and that allows the users to do the appropriate analysis on the data uh, to use the data for reporting purposes or also for uh, data mining or process mining uh, purposes where data mining is, is following the, the push model of data and process mining is, is more for following the Google for tax pool model uh, for of, of the same data but in a much more AI driven way so this this gives you an idea on on, uh, on the whole data architecture and data warehousing and, and data management uh, options out there I think with this uh, would be a good uh, hand over to Andreas and uh, Andreas the floor is yours to uh, show a few of these elements we uh, we've just been talking about in the eclear customs uh, solution thank you very much steve <clears throat> for the introduction and uh thank you also for getting the opportunity to present eclear's approach how we do customs technology works in a platform-based economy <clears throat> um yeah hello hello and welcome here from my side um yeah, the next 30 minutes of 30 to 40 minutes um yeah we talk about a uh, short introduction about the company and, and myself uh we talk about the five major challenges in the cross-border shipping and um, the integration into a platform and their solutions and finally um at the end there might be enough room for q and a's um yeah, next page please yeah, that's me. Um, I'm Andreas. Uh, I'm uh, have been having more than 20 years uh, in different functions within global logistics. My last station uh, was, a was as a director in customs and foreign trade in the international automotive industry. And uh, since uh, two years, I'm now with eClear uh, in the role of the VP customs and uh, in the same function also as the product owner. My team and um, and me, we develop uh, the solutions. Uh, we introduce you here in the in the upfront. <clears throat> yeah, um, yeah. You see here, um, our this is a little bit as our our mission. 
uh, is to make the cross-border business as easy as domestic sales um, for our customers uh, together with about 80 colleagues in four offices uh, in, in Germany, we are working on digitalization and simplifying the cross-border processes. Eclia is a pan-European banking regulated payment. I think that's a very, uh, yeah, very extra and uh, needs to be highlighted um, because uh, we are regulated from the BaFin as a payment facilitator, providing customs and VAT clearing as an embedded Checkout solution to the main main to the e-commerce marketplaces and digital platforms, but not only. Next page. <clears throat> These are our three main pillars uh, for marketplaces and digital platforms. Uh, we not only have custom solutions in our product portfolio but also VAT solutions for 30 European countries. All relevant information on sales and directions can be viewed in our cockpit. We call it single point of choose spot. Um, with eClear or with Clear Customs, we provide a board of free shipping experience for marketplaces and merchants to scale into Europe's most powerful markets that uh, is uh, beside the EU27, it's Switzerland, United Kingdom, and Norway. <clears throat> yeah, and on the next page, um, we summarized the five major challenges uh, from our perspective in cross-border trade. Um, one of the most important uh, and the biggest challenge is to find the right customs tariff classification. Um, <clears throat> different countries having different uh, nomenclatures. We see an example later on. Um, the landed cost calculation, um, we, we know that the consumer wants to see already at the time of checkout, uh, the, the landed costs needs to pay, it, no surprises. Then uh, the DDP delivery, the duty delivered, duty paid delivery to the final consumer. Um, to provide this kind of incoterm is a challenge. And um, so somehow you need uh, customs and VAT representation in the country of destination. And, um, and, and at the end, it's all about data and, and their data breaks. The EU reforms, uh, which took place uh, in July last year in 2021, uh, gives uh, a boost uh, in compliance requirements on those regulations. Mm, okay, then let's go to the next page, please. That's the challenge number one. Um, how, how to data mine correct customs tariff classification for the country of destination? Here you see an, uh, an example of a T-shirt T-shirt uh, of 100% cotton, knitted or crocheted. Um, it's classified in, in chapter 61, 09, 10, 0, 0, 10 in the European Union, and the same also in Germany. Germany has the the yeah the the, the 11 digits, the EZT, and um, and you see in Switzerland and Norway it's uh, under the same the same classification number tariffed. That's, an, that's a very easy and simple um, example, but uh, it, it can be a little bit more challenging or sophisticated. You see this on the next page with uh, cucumbers and, and gherkin. Um, <clears throat> gherkins, this is uh, an example where the tariff is uh, according yeah, the official um, rules and regulations is only the first six numbers of the classification are harmonized, the HS code. And can, um, we, uh, can we go to the next slide, uh, Mari? Thanks. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Andreas. Sorry. Um, you see here um, in the Tariq, uh, the, the number uh, is uh, only the first six, the, the, the first six, the, the black ones are uh, harmonized. 
And finally, at the end, uh, number uh, seven, eight, nine, and 10 is a deviation. And the deviation uh, in the European Union uh, differentiates uh, cucumber gherkins between with or without sugar. And the Swiss are not interested in sugar at all, but rather they pay attention to the size of the packaging. Whereas in, in Norway, a distinction is made between airtight packaging. Yeah, and uh, the challenge is how do you manage today your master data? And here in particular, the terrifying, the correct terrifying of your articles in corresponding nomenclatures is sometimes or must be the central element. Um, further factors depend on the tariff classification for example, customs tariff or prohibition and restrictions. So you need always to know um, your product and the right classification and the classification in the country of destination in order that you are um, aware about prohibitions and the restrictions. And um, how, we, how we solve this, um, I can explain you a little bit more in the, on the next page, please. Um, Eclair's, Eclair's approach is um, that we create our own nomenclature. We call it Eclair ID, and um, we build an own 15 digits code um, based on the Tarik, on the HS code, and on the Tarik code. Finally, the Eclair ID contains a variety of information, uh, for example, VAT rates from 30 countries including their reductions or super reductions, but also the custom rates, allocations to other nomenclatures and their related measures. And um, one, in one number, one number contains all those information. And um, <clears throat> if, you, if you are using our services, uh, you see it on the, on the next page how we do this. Um, so you do this um, very, very easy. So it's, it's necessary that the product portfolio, you have to upload your product portfolio or the, the merchant's product portfolio once via our uh, single point of truth dashboard or cockpit, whatever you call it. So that an assignment of customer, um, of customer SKU and the EKI ID takes place. Um, so we need to know the product very detailed and all those information before shipping of the first, um, before the, sh the, the shipment leaves or is shipped out the first time cross border. So we, we, we connect the SKU, um, the material number from the merchant with our internal EGA ID and we marry all the information behind the ETI ID with all the relevant nomenclatures from the countries re requested to. Um, <clears throat> yeah, to get an idea of the, of the user interface on the next page, please. Yeah, um, uh, Andreas, uh, maybe one, one point uh, on, on that. Uh, if, uh, if you look at the, the, for VAT, I know, and the customs, you know it better, but for VAT, I think there's 1.2 million versions of uh, VAT determination possible in the, in the EU with about, uh, what is it, 300,000 exceptions. So if, uh, for example, uh, you move into uh, the coming years into the options for countries to move the low fat rate and the high fat rate up and down, depending on the nature of the service or goods being uh, being uh, transacted, then um, you can imagine that number goes up considerably and that, that requires a smart engine uh, like eClear to to do that fat determination and in this particular case the customs uh, de determination because it's virtually impossible to do these things manually they were possible until recently so if if you had enough time 
to find the right classification for customs, as uh, Andreas just gave two or three examples on, then uh, obviously you would still have a human brain in the middle to, to determine that, especially if it's a stable flow of goods. Uh, however, on platforms, we do see uh, goods being transacted, which, uh, which come from the left and to the right and, and do carry all these variables with them. So by definition, you need an engine, a smart tax engine, uh, to do that determination um, and, and instantly give you the VAT rate or the customs rate uh, because that transaction is supposed to happen in the next split second when you order something online. Uh, Andreas, is that a fair statement uh, to make on, on the why is it so important to, to get that digital uh, uh, agent in, in place? Thanks, yeah, we, thanks Steve, for, for, for the yeah, clarification uh, here of that point. Um, we will see this later on the next pages why it is that important that you have all those information already available in the in the right and the correct uh, quality um, <clears throat> that uh, helps you a lot um, with the cross-border shipping so you have a, a stressless life and uh, because no one has to 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 maintain the data by human into the erp system uh, it's done automatically um, by, by our machine. Yes, we're sorry to interrupt. We have one question from the audience. Uh, so what if the product descriptions in master data are, are insufficient to classify the product? Then uh, we, we cannot classify, then we have to recheck this, but we gave a proposal um, about, the, about the options um, where we see the classification according to our learning AI. Um, so if, if we have not enough or sufficient product information, we, 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 we have uh, practical uh, learnings here. Um, yeah, we, we need detailed more product information, but um, yeah, the, the customer has to, yeah, to, to complete the information and then uh, we can teach our AI a little bit better and better and more. And um, at the very beginning, we have a lot of, of product information already available in our database, but uh, as more information of products are in, as better are the results. That's, that's it. Yeah, and, and Andreas, to add to that, uh, the, the, the algorithm, which is AI loaded, um, simply because uh, also on the, the FAT, uh, the eClear FAT solution, uh, to give you an idea, about 7 million SKUs products of Amazon were run through that algorithm. So the algorithm has a self-learning capability of recognizing uh, the SKUs and the products. And uh, that's, that's indeed, um, Andreas, what you just explained as well. Huh? So it, it is already uh, uh, ahead of the curve when it comes to other algorithms uh, which which only run 12 products in it. This is uh, an algorithm which is already fat uh, with uh, at least 7 million products uh, which run all over platforms like Amazon. Andreas, correct me if I'm wrong here, yeah, but uh, right. uh, so, I think the, the next the next um, human intelligence captured in an algorithm. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, and everything uh, what you what you yeah what needs to be done um, is uh, consolidated, visible here on on our platform uh, in the cockpit. So for the for the people who are working in the day to day business, they they have a workload seen here. What 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 is rejected? And um, what is what is uh, accepted from our machine? <clears throat> it's just to give you an idea how it how it could looks like. And um, the the features here are the upload and assign product master data on time, the upload product related relevant certificates. It's also possible in case uh, there's a CE certificate required in a country of destination or any other um, certificates. Um, this can be uploaded here 
uh, should be uploaded uh, to the relevant SKU that we um, can work independent without any involvement of our customers. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, what I mentioned already before, there are all European VAT and customs tariffs available. And um, the smartest point here is that uh, we keep the database always up to date. So um, there are in, in the middle of the year or month by month, there are little changes in the in the nomenclatures and um, yeah, we, we keep them up to date and uh, especially if at the year at the year end uh, there are bigger bigger changes so we, we care about. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's go to the next page, please. Um, yeah, the, the base, um, yeah, the, at the end it's all about the data and when, when, when the terrifying or the assignment is completed, um, a wide range of information is of course available um, related to, to their product or, um, and regardless of which European country is being shipped to. So um, that enables um, yeah, the shop also the calculation of all the costs to the consumer. Uh, we call it the landed cost calculation. And um, in, in case of an intra-European delivery, um, we, we are also able just to calculate the VAT based on, on the net sales price with, uh, with a certain uh, logic behind. Um, <coughs> all, all the costs are, are, can, can be paid upfront or th that's what we recommend that all the the costs are paid upfront, and uh, there are no nasty surprises for the consumer when the parcel service in the country of destination uh, wants to deliver and uh, calls and, and ask for uh, astronomical additional costs needs to be paid in advance. So, um, so here it's very clear with the landed cost calculation um, that the consumer knows any time. Um, what the final price will be um, with the help of um, the allocation of the correct tariffs and the calculation. Um, we have the rules and the method for the, cal for the calculation of the landed costs. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, so there is no, no any longer um, the cash on delivery needed. And um, all the, the costs, they are prepaid and um, on, on time of the checkout. So cost, transparency, cost transparency and just clarity for the consumer reduces the return rate or refusals of delivery and increase the customer satisfaction. So, and this is what we, what we can offer once the product is assigned or um, in our database um, connected with the EGID. All those information are available. <clears throat> Let's go to the, the next page, please. Yeah, and the, the, yeah, with, with a, a real, we call it a real DDP, um, to get a better customer experience and satisfaction, Shiba has to offer or must offer a real DDP delivered to their consumers, real means. Um, all the costs need to be paid in advance and no further involvement of the consumer in any operational topics. Um, for example, in the customs clearance operations. However, due to the threshold of the 150 euros or 135 British pound, uh, we divide um, the business into low and high value shipments. Low value shipments can be imported under the simplificated procedures here in, in the European Union, for example, under IOSS regime. But uh, how do you deal with high value shipments? an importer of record or an indirect customs representation is required in, in case of DDP. So it's not, it's not uh, allowed or uh, legal that you do the customs clearance on behalf of the consumer in case you choose DDP. Um, and, um, yeah, and another advantage is uh, the deviation of transport and customs clearance. So you are more, much more flexible with the 
with the carriers option and um, <clears throat> enables to to ship out consolidated in the country of destination and the final mile delivery can be done by a local carrier. So there are also that gives uh, or provides a lot of um, opportunities and improvements uh, in costs and in, in lead time. Um, yeah, and um, <clears throat> and yeah, you you need at the end someone who cares about the imports in the country of destination. We we call that customs brokerage, um, and or a customs representative. And um, as we know, all the the products and uh, we care about the product um, at the very beginning. Um, um, and we have, we have a very, very secure validation process and we ensure that we only get complete and validated correct data. So as soon as the validation was su successful, we generate automated customs declaration in our system. So what we want with our API, um, um, the communication between the merchant and our platform is an API. And um, we only accept good data, and um, yeah, we reject the, the data set if we find some, if we find findings. Um, and um, in our system, we just accept good data, and um, we offer also in in our spot uh, in the in the dashboard an overview that's very easy and very simple and um, yeah, easy to read overview for the people who on the, on the shipper side, they with a, with a signal function green and red and uh, only the reds uh, needs to be worked on. Um, so Andreas, that, that, and, and, and does that mean you, you do track uh, not only the customs for the merchants on the platform, but you're also able, uh, same with that, by the way, but you're also able to support the platform itself, which under DAC7 will become uh, chain liable for these uh, taxes, especially on VAT. Uh, is, is that a correct statement? So can you share the data on the merchants uh, with the platform, uh, uh, the one who who, uh, ex, uh, who processes the data on the platform and is probably the, the, the platform owner? Is that a correct statement? Mm, we divide a little bit into into the uh, representation at customs. Uh, so in, in, in certain cases, um, we accept indirect representation and we take over the, the high risk and the liability for the import. And uh, those products import in, in on behalf of, of eClear in the country of destination, we care a little bit more uh, about, about the product itself, about the product compliance as well and the classification. Um, however, due to our algorithm um, and um, about the classification, um, I, I think it's almost, almost, not 100%, but almost impossible to classify wrong um, because of the numbers of data already classified. Um, but uh, what I mentioned here is the the, the shipping data, if they are not complete, for example, or the the net weight is higher than the cross weight, um, so we reject the, the, the data set and we do not accept the data set. That's what I mentioned here. That we only accept good data upfront, the master data, and second, uh, the, the shipping data uh, transmitted by API to us. In but that means the, you know, you're using your AI tool to double check uh, uh, the, the invoice correct. data, shipping data, the, the raw data coming from the transactions from the, the ERP system, and, and you, you make sure there's no inconsistencies in that. If there is, you go back to the merchant and uh, ask them to complete uh, or re reconcile incorrect positions, correct? That's correct. 
sorry, go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, customs broker and the representative. Um, yeah, in order to operate cross-border e-commerce as easy as domestic trade, dedicated legal requirements must be taken into account and ensured. And hereby the greatest challenges are to determine the correct costs for duties and VAT. Uh, no zero involvement of the consumer in the customs declaration and VAT filing process. And, um, and you need someone who cares in the country of destination of the shipments in customs and uh, who takes over the customs and VAT representation in direct or indirect. Um, yeah, and you see here in the picture, um, very, very simple um, how, we, how we do this. Uh, we are direct connected to the authorities' IT systems. We are running here a SAP, a very robust SAP GTS system with the interfaces into the main um, uh, IT systems from the customs authorities in, in those countries here. Okay, then uh, please go to the next page. Um, yeah, finally, um, here is a conclusion. At the end, it's all about data. Um, in, in, in my old company, we said always, shit in, shit out. Um, here we call it a little bit more, yeah, more, more serious, uh, good data in, good data out. Um, we give your data purpose. Once the SKU upload is done, we, we care about the process of, about the cross-border uh, processes and all the obligations. Um, hereby, the, the greatest challenges are still complete, correct, and up-to-date master, master data. Um, the ongoing validation and the verification of the, of the master data, of the classification itself, um, and um, making the data efficiently usable. And um, yeah, if you have a different kind of business partner along your supply chain, the availability of the correct data along the business, uh, the entire business processes and their partners. Uh, the conclusion here is, uh, in the end, it's all about data quality and the availability of uh, correct data without any data break. And uh, yeah, the precondition here are clean and correct master data. Um, we care of the complete cross-border process from the onboarding of a product, the terrifying to the customs clearing with complete and correct data. All interactions between the involved systems are realized with standardized e APIs for filing to customs authorities. We are using GTS from SAP. So, um, yeah, and that's, that's at the end here, our the database and um, is our, our um, platform at the end, yeah. <clears throat> so that's, that's it so far here for, for, the, for the main challenges. And um, yeah, this is, should just give you a an, 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 an brief overview of the next four pages. Um, about the solutions, about the border-free e-commerce solution we, we are offering. Um, we provide a border-free shipping experience for your marketplaces, merchants, on orders into Europe's most lucrative markets, uh, United Kingdom, Switzerland, Norway, and for sure also into the European Union. And um, <clears throat> on the next page, Um, yeah, here is an impression about the benefits of clear customs in, in detail. It's um, for, for the merchants, it's declaration free, um, end of doorstep payment, the, the cash on delivery. And uh, we are convinced that we can reduce also the return rates. And uh, the benefits for the marketplaces are um, we are offering a fast lane customs declaration. Um, best customs tariffs database and a tariff assignment to millions of product easily. So <clears throat> due to the 
the high volume Steve already mentioned, uh, we are having already in the database. Yeah, here yeah, that, that's an, uh, an, 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 a screenshot from our compliance control system here on, on the dashboard. Uh, the dashboard has a central function and offers its users a complete overview of all their transaction in different marketplaces and predefined KPIs. In addition to, to the sales driven information, it also provides tax and customs compliance relevant information to support the ongoing business. It offers information about deviation and to do's in, in an accessible format for the people who are in charge of. And, um, and here, um, one second, these are the benefits for the, for the merchants um, mentioned uh, and offers much more. Uh, so you can choose whatever you like to have to see here on the dashboard. Um, but at the end, um, for the merchant, it, it, the benefits are real-time alerts with an avatar and um, a centralized order, transaction payment and settlement report, uh, omni-channel monitoring of all marketplaces and um, POS and uh, payment providers. And the benefits for the marketplaces are supporting sellers, accelerating the cross-border businesses, enhancing merchants' loyalty with marketplace and increase sellers' touch points with marketplaces or platform. We are um, taking care about uh, high uh, certified systems. Um, on the next page, we are... Uh, as uh, uh, Andreas, maybe back to the page before this one. Um, the, the, if, if a corporate wants uh, or the merchant uh, on the platform wants a different uh, uh, dashboard, uh, how easy it is to create different dashboards for different needs in your it can, system? It can be defined flexible. Um, what, whatever, uh, so we have the offering standard uh, um, reports and uh, KPIs here, but uh, this can be easily created uh, from the user, what they wanna see on, on, the, on the landing page here at the beginning. And um, it depends, so if, if it's more sales driven or if it's more, more business driven from the customs perspective, because here, there are is a menu on the left side, and you can you can uh, navigate through the menu. Okay. Uh, it, it does it also mean that in in end to end terms, you're not only picking up the data, you're testing the quality of the data, and do this type of analysis, but you can also make sure the right data gets uh, filed with the digital mailbox of the tax authorities uh, on behalf of the clients and, and that's part of the customs representation you you were talking about is that correct because i see that filing on the the bottom the right bottom on this screen as well that's correct yeah mm -hmm. that's correct and uh, it, it offers a uh, plenty of, uh, of of options um what what you can what you can track here so anywhere I, would, I need to file customs uh, declaration in the EU, you guys can can help with a platform and a dashboard like this. The, the client by the client uploading the data, and and you guys do the rest. Yes, you can upload the data, correct, and um, yeah, you can also upload the, the the customs receipt or the customs bill. So this is the the vehicle. Of communication between us and the and the customer, so, so it gives uh, it gives business data as well as tax data and in in combination, which is obviously very interesting for a lot of merchants. Um, and maybe there's questions in the audience. If you like to raise a question, please uh, use the chat functionality. Uh, Mari, was there any more questions being raised? Uh, yes, there is one question raised. Uh, if you have any interface to SAP, and also could you compare the implementation costs of eClear with SAP GTS and Oracle GTM? Can you repeat it again? I, it was not clear for me. Yes, if you could 
compare implementation cost of eClear with SAP and GTC, GTS or GTM? So uh, I think, um, do you hear me well, uh, Andreas? Yeah, I hear you. Uh, so the first question was, uh, does the, the eClear talk to SAP? Um, I think that's a full yes. I know that uh, for a fact. But then the next yeah. question was implementation cost of this system. If you compare compare it with uh, SAP, uh, BPM, and, uh, and and Oracle, um, where would you be in the, in the that competitive landscape? I think that's the, the the nature of the question. Okay, but I don't I don't have any numbers here with me. Uh, yes, uh, the first question is a clear yes. Yeah, uh, we are a business partner from SAP, um, <clears throat> but um, the the numbers I don't have them with me. So if there is uh, if, if there are more and more interest in, um, probably it may, might be more more sense to contact me by email and then we can provide a, a good answer. Yeah, it would require mapping, I guess, uh, and the number of interfaces and et cetera, et cetera, and the number of filings you you're looking at uh, just to uh, to give some answer to that uh, that question. Uh, for Andreas to be able to give uh, uh, to sort of the license fee, but also the implementation time uh, it takes to do the mapping and to do the uh, matching with a, a dashboard like this. Correct, uh, Andreas? Mm, yeah. Yeah. I hope um, this. I trust uh, to the audience that uh, that gives the uh, first answer at least on uh, on the question. Any other questions, uh, Mari, you picked yes, up? Yes, uh, they followed up that uh, uh, saying it, of course, it will be dependent on the project scope, number of yeah. countries, etc. And following up, TDP is mentioned. Does that mean that a consumer can upfront determine the duties and import taxes while placing an order? So DDP is mentioned, yes, and that's possible. And uh, all the 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 costs are paid prepaid. Is this the answer to the question? So all the we do the we do the calculation upfront in the checkout, and um, and all customs duties, import VAT, or transport costs can be paid on needs to be paid upfront in the checkout, and we do the clearance and we do the the, the regulation with customs authorities and the merchant. Yeah, and I think an important feature, yes, I think it's an answer to the question, uh, Andreas, and, and an, an important feature of eClear, which is different from a lot of the other tools, is that eClear has a banking license, so it can actually receive payments and, and do, uh, arrange payments on behalf of uh, uh, its, uh, its clients, in this case, the merchants. Um, uh, in a in a much more efficient manner because it's all regulated uh, from from that perspective. So that's another added feature to what again what I call the next generation of tax agents uh, you're looking at here. Okay. Um, any more questions, Mari, before we move on? Not at this moment. No. Okay. Thanks, Andreas. Okay, yeah, that's uh, yeah, the last page. On the next page, um, we are a um, certified company. Steve already mentioned here, we are um, a payment and we are having a payment ac acquiring license um, by the BaFin, by the Deutsche Bundesanstalt für Finanzdienstleistungen. This is unique in that industry. And um, yeah, we, we have uh, a regular audits, internal, external audits that ensures a very high and uh, a high compliance standard. And uh, yeah, we are SAP certified and um, we are running um, a HANA system here. And um, yeah, and the BDO, uh, we are also BDO certified uh, in accounting and bookkeeping standards. <coughs> yeah, um, we are, close to the end and um, 
Yeah, yeah there's, there's certified uh, element is very important as I started my first slide with certified people, certified processes and certified software. What you see happening more and more, DAC, the, the, the DAC regulations from the EU are a good example, DAC 6, DAC 7, etc. Um, the, 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 the more, more and more tax uh, actors in the tax game uh, get regulated and, and have to report to the authorities and have a license to operate. So I, I do um, see this, this ISO certification and, and, and um, any certification of the people working with it, uh, as well as the processes, to become a, a, a crucial point of attention by all corporates uh, as we speak. Honestly, uh, what's missing here, we are also for sure an authorized uh, economic operator certified by, by German customs. Yeah, the AEO status. Exactly. So that's on the process. So I think, um, Andreas, is there anything more we, we need to address? Because we're closing. Yeah, thank you very much, Steve. Um, okay, um, Mari, last uh, last chance for the audience to raise any questions. Is there any final questions? No, all the questions were answered. Okay, thank you very much. Well, uh, to all of you, thanks very much for joining. And uh, within the hour, we uh, we close on this uh, webinar. And uh, please keep your eyes open for our next webinar, which will uh, happen soon. Uh, you can find the details on the, on the TPA website. And uh, stay tuned. Uh, have a nice day. And thanks, Andreas. Thank you to all. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.